Welcome to the Schweiki Media Expert webinar series where we team up with leading marketing and publishing experts to provide you with tips and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. You know, they say in, in the startup world, and I really treat this as a startup, that you can go one-on-one -on -one as you grow, and then you start to go one-to-many. And so one of the things I did is I would go to the blogs of the people I respected and wanted to gain their attention and build relationships, and I would leave comments, and I would do it consistently. And in some cases, I would agree. In some cases, I would respectfully disagree. And, you know, I started to build relationships that way. Hello, everyone. I am here today with Jeannie Dietrich, and Jeannie is the founder and CEO of Armit Dietrich, a Chicago-based integrated marketing communications firm. She is the lead blogger at the PR and marketing blog Spin Sucks, co-author of Marketing in the Round, and also co-host of Inside PR, a weekly podcast about communications and social media. And today we are going to be talking about tips for building a community. Jeannie, how are you doing today? Tips for building a community, huh? Yes, I think that's something you are very versed in. <laughs> I could probably talk about that a thing or two, maybe. I think so. I think so. You uh, you have quite a very rabid, uh, in a good way, I guess, very active, I guess is a better word, community, uh, community that you've built. So it's not easy, you know. No. Um, building communities, especially part of what we're going to talk about is um, – people who should kind of get that out of their head as well because yeah. I think for certain kinds of businesses, certain stuff, um, you know, you're learning about content marketing, you're learning about social media, you're learning about all this, and, and community almost always comes in the conversation. But they're talking to the masses, and some of those masses just need to understand that a community might not be for them, but that's obviously not for everybody. But So we'll get into all that. But before we do, I want you to tell your story. And, and the benefits that you've experienced for, from building years, not necessarily all the details of how you did it all, but, you know, just in general, like, you know, the benefits, kind of just your story, if you don't mind. Sure. I don't mind. Um, you know, I, it, I didn't go about it strategically and say, okay, we have to build community and this is what we're going to do. Um, you know, we started blogging in 2006, and it was a disaster, um, it was very much, you know, everybody from from me through the intern wrote, and so you'd hear a different voice every day, but you'd hear the same voice only mm, like every five weeks because there were 33 of us at the time. And it was very disjointed. There was no editorial calendar. There was no chief content officer. Nobody was being edited. It was very, 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 very bad. Um, and then when the Great Recession hit, not only did I have to lay off some of my team, which is a different story for a different time, um, I had to take on a lot of the work myself that they were doing, and the blog was one of them. And so I made the commitment that I would blog twice a week just to see if it was something that we could change from really terrible to something that could actually be a tactic that we would sell to clients. And it took off. And I think part of the reason it took off is because I uh, tend to be very opinionated and <laughs> Even though I care very deeply about being liked and not hurting other people's feelings, I, I have a sense of the right way to do things, and I'm very vocal about that. And, you know, you, either people love that or hate that, and if they love it, you start to build community and brand enthusiasts and loyalists and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You also tend to build enemies, but I wouldn't even call them enemies. I would call them, you know, competitors or Friendly frenemies. Answers. Yeah, you know, you know, people that may not totally agree with you, but respect that you're so rabid in your convictions. Mm -hmm. And it really, that's what's built the community. The other thing I do is that my husband makes fun of me all the time about this because I have this innate need to respond to everybody who takes the time to share something. And I think you see that on my Facebook page, you see it on Twitter, and you definitely see it on the blog. If somebody's going to take time out of their day to write a comment on the blog, I'm going to respond to them. Like mm -hmm. that's for me, that's that's sort of the whole point of it. And I hate to say it, but it's di that's different. Not everybody. Um, in fact, the majority of people don't do that, um, and that's really how we've how we've done all of this is because we care about what people think, we care about what they have to say, we encourage professional discourse, we encourage respectful conversation, and it works. It works really, really well. Now, you, you mentioned you know you, 
you know, you had to, you went through the Great Recession, you had to lay people off, you took over the blogging, but you know, blogging doesn't necessarily mean you're building a community. No. And, and, there, and there's many other benefits to blogging. You know, even if you can't build a community, and you know, if Joe Polizzi happens to listen to this, I'm sure he has many, many other things he's listening to and doing. But you know, he always talks about that. But I, I think what gets lost in the benefits of blogging and content marketing and all that is there are many other benefits. But one of them, and what we're going to be concentrating today, is building a community. So you said you started blogging. And but that doesn't necessarily mean community building. So I mean, did you have the idea from the get go that that's what you wanted that to gravitate to, or is that something that you just naturally kind of ended up going that direction? No, I think it came naturally. We didn't set out to say we, you know, we want to build this community. I mean, back then, it, nobody really knew what to expect. I think today is different. Today, if you were going to start, and you would be able to say, okay, in the next five years, we're going to build a community of brand loyalists who do this. And, you know, like you would be able to do that. But back then, nobody had any idea what this blogging thing would do. And so we just really, I mean, the whole point of it was to see if it was something that we could build and sell to clients. You know, is mm -hmm. is this a tactic that our clients should use? And that was the whole point of it. So no, we didn't set out to do that. Um, but, you know, I remember I wrote – in fact, we just had this conversation the other day. Uh, Ann Hanley and I had the conversation. I wrote a blog post. It had to have been 2009 called – I can't even remember what the title of it was, but something along the lines of professional speakers who are being paid to go on stage should not wear jeans. And I really <laughs> believe that. I believe that if you're paying $2,000 to attend a conference and the speaker is pay, being paid twenty grand or more to show up – have the common courtesy to, you know, press your pants and put on a shirt that doesn't make you look like you just rolled out of bed. And for heaven's sakes, brush your hair and don't put on a ball cap. Like, I really believe, you know, part of that is the way I was brought up because my mom always said you can never be overdressed, but you can always be underdressed. Hmm. And so that's part of that conviction. But I wrote the blog post, and I remember as plain as if it were yesterday, Mitch Joel commented and he just railed me a new one no and way. my reaction was Mitch Joel commented on my blog <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's what I was thinking that's exactly <laughs> that is awesome and I sent him like I, I had this whole debate with him in the comments of the blog post and I think from there he kind of went all right I don't agree with you, and Mitch Joel is a great example. I mean, he wears black it's all jeans. black, though. Doesn't right, he? it's all black, but they are still jeans. And, um, you know, we, he teases me about it now, but that is that was the catalyst for us becoming friends. That's awesome. I was about to say, what if they're like skinny jeans in Austin or San Francisco? Do you have any any uh, any, uh, <laughs> I just, any you know, I think that most people don't look their best in jeans. Most people look their best in Blacks or skirts. No, I, I was, like, I was, most people don't look very good in jeans, so I don't care if they cost two hundred dollars. <laughs> and I know lots of people disagree with me, which is fine. But that's really a, but that's okay. I mean, totally I, okay. What, what I just see a blog post from Express Writers today about contrarian point of views. You know, mix it right. up, get out right. there. And they're not the first people I've heard that from. I've heard that from you know, I've probably heard that. 20, 50, 100 times. Oh, yeah, because you know? that's what so, works. Yeah, it, and it did <laughs> for you, right? Now you built a It works for everybody. It works for everyone. Exactly. So wh how long did you um, take to start reaping the benefits of the community that you built? Was it a day, a month, two, uh, months, two years, five years? Six years. Okay. Yeah. Was I mean, you obviously had other good stuff going for you, but, you, sure. you, but from that part of it, it, it took a while. Well, and the reason it took a while, I'll tell you this story. So in March of 2015, I had just been to Social Media Marketing World, and my friend Danny Eine invited – he was in Chicago for his mastermind group, and he invited me to come for lunch that Saturday um, at their event. And I kind of hemmed and hawed on it because I'd been gone all week. I was tired. I'm an introvert, so I needed my space. I didn't want to be around another group of people where I had to be on. And, like, I just kind of was like – and finally, I said to myself, just go. Like, he's a good friend. He's invited you to do this. It's only lunch. Like, what's the big deal? And I went, and it was people like Jeff Bullis and Adam Franklin and Sophie Lizard and Danny, of course. And the whole point was for me to be there to talk about, for an hour, to talk about how to use public relations to 
to build your um, well, to build your community and to really build a, a group of, of rabid fans. And it turned into, well, what are you doing with your community? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, how many people are on your, how many people subscribe to your uh, blog? And at the time it was maybe 30,000. And I said 30,000. Wow. So, you know, at this point, remember, it's been six years, right? Okay. That I've been doing this, right? And Still. I remember Sophie Luther gasping. And she said, you have 30,000 people who subscribe to your blog and you're not selling them anything? And I was like, well, no, we give everything away for free and I believe in goodwill. And, I mean, like the people in that room, one person got up, uh, stood up and started banging his head up against the wall and there were all these audible gasps and they just gave me the hardest time. They and in fact, have. I saw, right, I saw Jeff Bullis a couple of weeks ago and he said, I remember that and how frustrated we were with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frustrated slash impressed, really, though, because you're doing the hard part. The other thing is, okay, let's find something to sell. I mean, you could figure that out in a two-hour creative right, brainstorming with right, your team. Right. Building that took six years, you know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be right there with them, you know, in awe and in, in really looking at you cross-eyed, like, what? Yeah. yeah, so, okay, so then, so, okay. But that's, well, that was, that was kind of... A, a mistake, right? So it was a mistake, uh, and that's yeah. what that's the whole point. Like, it shouldn't take you six years to yeah. kind of figure that out. It should not take you six years. So yeah, so you can once you start building a community of any of any, of any numbers, you, you can start. You just got to think of something that they would want and would be a value to them, yeah. and just start there. Um, and uh, I mean, or do you have any other any, anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, and you don't even have to have you don't have to have you know hundreds of people. You can have ten. If mm -hmm. ten people who are really rabid about what you're doing, that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I hear you. Now, here, I want to move on to, okay, I think everyone's really going to be interested. Okay, I, all right, I, this is why I want to do this. Get to the, get to the meat and <laughs> potatoes here. How did she go about doing this? I know you said you started blogging, but I, I know you do much more than that. I, I've seen, you know, some of your – lead magnets um, and how you do all of that stuff. So uh, if, if you don't mind, you know, give us all your dirty little secrets or as many that you feel comfortable giving or whatever, but I know you're an open person, so I expect them all. Well, I would say, you know, back in the day, it was very much about using social media to find the right people and engage them and then bring them over. So I did things like, I mean, I, I can't do this anymore just from a time perspective, but, you know, they say in, in the startup world, and I really tr treat this as a startup, that you can go one-on-one -on -one as you grow, and then you start to go one-to-many. And so one of the things I did is I would go to the blogs of the people I respected and wanted to gain their attention and build relationships, and I would leave comments, and I would do it consistently. And in some cases, I would agree. In some cases, I would respectfully disagree. And, you know, I started to build relationships that way. And what I found is that, you know, there's that they, they start doing it too. So then they go, well, wait a second, who is this person and why is she always on my blog? And, you know, and then they start coming to your blog and then they start sharing your content. And so that was one way. And then another way. Whoa, 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 was, let, 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 me, let me stop there because okay. that's a good point because I want to dig into that. Right. What, what you're saying is as you're getting, and you do, it, it's, it's, it's basically a, a time thing for you right now slash, you know, adding a hundred people to your, well, I don't know how big your list is now. Um, it doesn't move the needle for you or doesn't, you know, isn't worth that time. You reach a point where that, but at, at from zero to a hundred is, well, that's fantastic, right? And yeah, 500 incredible. to 600, and 900 to a thousand, all, all of that is right. fantastic, right? So what you're saying is you, you identified people who you feel would be interested in what you had to say, and then you went literally to their social channels of any yep. shape or form and you started yep. to that's that's what you did huh that's what i did and the okay. other thing i did is every saturday <laughs> I, this makes me laugh every saturday i would go through and choose 100 people to follow on twitter based mm -hmm. on similar interests whatever it was and i would i would follow them and then throughout the the next week i would start to retweet their content and have conversations with them and all that now that's not sustainable but man, it worked really well in the beginning. Well, it's the same non-sustainable as your. It's the same sort of thing. Right. It's a, that's right. a social channel, so that's what you're doing. Now, real quick on that note, it'd be hard to 
follow those people and then sift through all your Twitter feeds. So did you create like a list yep. that says? Yep. Okay. Uh, so you can go on Twitter, click on the little icon, and drops down. It says create a list. Uh, make a list that's flattering because they're going to see it. Right. That they're on it. And, uh, or <laughs> or you could do a private. You could, or you could do a private one, right? You so you could do a private, private one. Yes. Yeah. And they wouldn't. They won't see that they're on that list, right? But if you want to flatter them, put you know, yeah, genies, rock stars, right? And and then they'll see that, and then so I, I would suggest doing that. I mean, is that something that you did? Create a fun name so that they saw that. I actually kept them private. Okay. I think most of them were okay. private. But yeah, I okay, mean, so you were doing a lot of them. Yeah, and and I think today I would probably in today's digital world I would probably keep them private because there's so much junk out there that people tend to go kind of roll their eyes when they see stuff like that. So I think I would probably keep them private today. Well, I don't roll my eyes when I see it. I'm at it to list. I'm like you, <laughs> like yes. early on, like sweet. You're like yes. Pretty good. Pretty. I get. I get a. This guy has pretty good stuff to say. It's awesome. <laughs> I'll take. I'll take it. I'm going to use that. <laughs> all, all right. All right. Moving on. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Right. This person put me in this Twitter list that says he has decent things to say every once in a while. <laughs> So, okay, so that, all right, and we're doing some grassroots stuff, which, by the way, I love. I know you're part of, you know, we can get into the lead magnets and your automations and all of that stuff, but I want to cover the scope for everybody, building it all the way up, and then touch on some bigger things once people are more established. So I don't want you to think that going way back in the day is what I don't want to hear. I want to hear about that stuff. So, um, so you you know, go to their blogs or their Twitter handles or their social pages, whatever, and you you built it up from the ground up and you got some momentum going. What else did you do? Oh, those were the big things. Um, I made sure that I shared all of the content, um, that I was bringing people, visitors to their sites as well, um, tagging them when I shared it, of course. Um, what else did I do? LinkedIn was a big one, so in groups, you know, I I was a member of several groups, and so I would share content in there that was not ours, that was somebody else's, um, and tag them in there. Google Plus, I did the same thing. Yeah, so it was wow. just really about sharing that content. Of, of yeah, it was. I mean, it's definitely not sustainable, but it it worked mm -hmm. ridiculously well. And then, like I said earlier, it you know, people. I think you tend to see that people will tweet you or they'll tag you on a Facebook post or on LinkedIn or Google Plus or wherever it happens to be, or, you know, they'll come and comment on your blog and it's crickets. And then they, you know, it gets to the point where nobody wants to go back because you're not, they feel like you're not paying attention. Even though you're, re you may be reading every single thing, mm -hmm. you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. So I always make sure that I comment back. And then the other thing I do is I start to learn things about people who tend to come back more and more and more and the the way we did it in the beginning was follow friday which as you know on twitter you could do used to do the big follow friday and then tag a bunch of people well we actually did follow friday on the blog where i would highlight one person every mm -hmm. week and the reasons i thought that they should be you should follow them uh, that got to be really overwhelming after about two years and so then we changed it to the spin sucks inquisition where i interviewed the person Versus me saying, these are all the great things I think about this person. I interviewed the person, and I did that in writing for a couple of years. And then and, we and these are fans of yours, not other influencers. Right. They're, yeah, they're readers. That We, we okay. took a very specific approach not to do um, influencers. We, you know, it was very much if you comment on the blog, if you share our content, if you buy our products, if you're a student – then you're going to be, and it's funny because influencers will say to me, how come you've never featured me? And I'm like, you don't freaking read the blog. <laughs> and you don't pay me any money. And you don't pay me any money. <laughs> I'll have you on for a different reason, but not for that. <laughs> yeah, right. So so tell me if I'm wrong in thinking why this worked for you is you only can do, how often do you do, you do the spin sex inquisition? Weekly? Monthly? Once a week, yeah. Once weekly. So that's still only, what, 50 people a year? And I know there's 52 weeks in the year, Jeannie, but 50 work weeks. Um, so you would do this you know 48 to 50 times a year which is only 48 to 50 people but right. people see that and they're like i want to be on that yep. right yep. so you have this waiting list of yep. people right okay mm -hmm. that's why i work yeah just a human natural sweepstake type of thing okay right. yeah people Very... do not like to be left out yeah awesome all right well that's a great pointer you know hi 
reward your freaking people who are saying stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, reward your customers. How like I have a we have a a client who's who's like B to B as B to B as they can come. They make um, oxidizers that take all the crap out of a plant before it goes into the air. It's all EPA regulated. I mean, it is as B to B as it comes. And we started about three years ago sending choosing one. VIP prospect or customer each month and sending them Garrett's popcorn, which is the Chicago, like, cult popcorn, and saying to them, you know, how much we appreciated whatever it happened to be. And that thing has brought them more referrals and more word of mouth than anything. So the idea here is that even though you're not building community online specifically, you're building community among these people who are centers of influence, who are former customers, who are prospective customers who maybe haven't made a decision yet, you know, so they, we took all of those, those groups of people and chose one person per month to send this popcorn to. And it, I mean, is ridiculously popular. People talk about it at trade shows. And then again, again, it goes back to the sweepstakes thing. Why, why don't I get any popcorn? I want some popcorn. Like it's really hard to walk down the street and buy some popcorn, but and what do you say? It could be coming. It's yeah. Coming. I mean, yeah. Keep totally it. Yeah. Keep coming. yeah. Yeah. No, I see. And, and then if you think about it, you know, I mean, you could go and look at, let's pick a huge blog, like Social Media Examiner, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't have it in front of me, but if you go to their comments on their blogs, there's not going to be 25 to 50 comments. There's no. just not. Nope. But after one year of doing this, you have 48 people who are going to feel like they owe it to you to comment, say something, right? Correct. And over six yes. years, you have 250 people who are yes. doing that. And that's not to mention all the other stuff you're doing, right? Yes. Is that how, that's what it works? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, you're a genius. You're a genius. And then the other thing I do, which is tends to be, uh, it's very characteristic of me, is because I'm learning things about these people, right? I then start to push buttons or introduce them to other people in comments and then tag, like I start to bring them together Mm -hmm. um, that way. And it's been really fun to watch. We, we launched a private Slack community in January. And so you can't actually see it because it's private, but um, the engage, the level of engagement that's going on in there is 2009, 2010 level of engagement. Um, externally, where we've seen, I think everybody has seen a decline in uh, comments publicly, you know, in the last couple of years, we're seeing that level of engagement again, but well, in this sense. private group. Yes. Because you don't, you have rabid followers now, yeah, they're, you know, yeah. and it took, you know, just a system put in place, you know, yep. to, to make yep. all this happen. And, you know, I say just the system, I mean, you had all the ideas. <laughs> I mean, don't make me sell you short on that. But what you did have, it was a system. And what you did is you worked it and you were consistent and you gave back and voila comes relationships, yep. right? Return on relate. As yep. Ted Rubin says, return, return on, on relationships, R and R. And and it's great hearing people like him talk because he's not very technical at all. No, he's not. Uh, not at all. You know, we just had him. Been had him. I actually got the pleasure of hanging out with him at South by, and um, uh, I've had him on the podcast a couple of times. Did one last week with him, and he, you know, uh, it, it, we were talking. Uh, God, I can't remember. Where, I, I should remember, right? Two minutes. But it, you know, I thought it was going to be about big mass. You know, and again, he went circled right back to that, and and that gets lost in all this automation and AI and virtual yep. reality. Yep. And blah 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 blah. Right is. Hey, slow down to speed up, you know, slow down and, and, and engage and get as much as you can out of that. I say get as much as you can, but to get as much as you can, you're going to have to give a lot. So, um, you know, hearing people like you, you've implemented that without knowing it, I guess. You right. didn't probably hear about me turn on relay. It just felt right to you. Yeah. And, and then it worked for you. Okay. Well, keep keep going. So we, we you, you've talked a lot of elbow grease work, which – I think it's very people need to hear it, you know, you know, 
you know, I'm sorry if any millennials or somebody's listening to this, you know, it's not just going to pop up and, you know, and you're the first on Twitter anymore. And now you can get tons of followers and all of a sudden you're an influencer and blah, blah. I mean, you got to work at it this day and age. You have to, all, you should have probably, most likely you had to work for it, but especially now. Right. So you kind of need to go, you know, from the ground up. And then once you get to a 30,000 level, then you can start doing some other things or even 10,000 level. But um, or, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to change to your point, you know, when you when you add 100 people when you're 500, that's significant. When you add 100 people when you're 30,000, it's not as significant. Um, so, but I think you hit different levels where you start, just like you do in a business, you start to mm -hmm. say, okay, this no longer makes sense, but ha so how can we scale this so people still feel like they're getting what they always have just at a different level? And so mm -hmm. that's why you start to, you know, pay attention to trends and new things that are coming out and perhaps new ways of doing things and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what, are, what else did you do once you, okay, so you got the ball rolling, which I'm sure was, you know, really hard, uh, but you did it and you got it going. You got that big boulder slowly rolling and then it got a little <laughs> bit faster and a little bit faster. Okay. Then what did you do to put some, some rocket fuel into it? What are some of the other things you started to do? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because it's a funny time to have this conversation because for about two years, we didn't do much and we we didn't do anything that was different. You know, we we continued to do the same things. And just like everybody else, we were frustrated that nobody was commenting on blogs. And yeah, I mean, we, we look at the share numbers and we have gigantic share numbers, but only 20% of those people are actually reading, clicking and reading, you know, so how do, so we look at things like, well, how do we, encourage or motivate people who are retweeting a blog post but not clicking to actually click, right? So you look right. at that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for the last two years, we've been focused more on building products for the, the people we already have, the community we already have, and we haven't been focused on building community. And we're back to that focus this year. Well, yeah, well, keep, keep going. I mean, I, I definitely want to, you know, talk about how you got your engagement going and all that, but I, I – I know you do other things, Jeannie. I've seen them, and they work really well. Maybe I'll, I don't I'll, know what they are. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. You're, you're, when you do your lead magnet, you know, you give something away, and then you have that automation sequence that goes out. But I'd like to talk, you know, you know, you know, you know, the tone of it, you know, to get people en engaged. Right, and stuff. right, right. So I know that works really well, and and that's a tried and true thing. That still works, right? I mean, that's. Oh yeah, that works. I mean, that's really that's really money, well. right? Yeah. I mean, that's. You that's, know what works? What we're doing? We're in the middle of right now. That's ridiculous, and I can give you exact stats because I looked them up this morning. We are, so we we did a survey of PR professionals, because that's our audience, and asked things about business development. And some of the information we found was, it went to our, our gut instincts, but was also kind of shocking. And so what it did is it allowed us to create content around the kinds of things that PR professionals need to do from a business development standpoint. Um, and so I went to five of the trade publications, so PR trade publications, and I offered them the survey data first, and all of them said, this is great, can you write content for us around it? So I had, in a two-week period, I had five articles that ran in the five trades with my byline on it that linked back to the survey results. We did not gate the survey results, and we went back and forth internally about, do we do it on SlideShare, but require an email address to do it? Do we do it behind a landing page and that requires an email address? And we can't, we went back and forth about it because I didn't want to use what I'll call traditional media relations to drive people to a landing page because most people, most publications will take that link out. So we decided to ungate it and then we pixeled that page so that anybody who visited that page then got a Facebook ad for our upcoming free five day boot camp. Okay. The conversion rate is ah, – just stop my, my calculator. I will tell you exactly. The conversion rate is – And while you look – 93%. What? 93. Nine, wait, 93% for the ads placed? Yeah. No. Yes. You're telling me for every, you know, 100, cli 100 clicks that you paid for – Ninety-three of those. Yes. I've never heard of anything like that <laughs> in my entire life. 
Correct. <laughs> that it, you must have had just well, it's free boot camp, I guess. But you were hitting your yeah. So the market. strong offer, um, strong offer, exact mark target market. Yep. And, and and let me just explain for people um, who might not understand what what you meant by pixels. Basically, you can put like a, a UTM code. What's that called? Urgent tag. Mer I don't know. I call it something. a unique URL. I don't know. Whatever, right? Yeah. Whatever it is. So you can put a pixel on your on a on a specific page, and when people land at that, then you can build a Facebook custom audience out of that. That is specifically for people who landed on that page, right. and then you can have that audience, and then you can put. I, I assumed you did like a a CPM because it was a smaller audience, I guess, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you would put that in front of them and have this all great offer going to a, a, a perfect audience. So if mm -hmm. you have an opportunity where you know a perfect audience is coming, or if you have a page that attracts a certain perfect audience, put a tracking on that, and then that's a way you can do it versus her gating the content, meaning somebody has to give your name, email to access it. And I can appreciate the dilemma. Um, sure. Uh, what would it be? What would it be done if um, – one of your concerns was because it was coming from traditional media and they might ixnay it. Um, so let's just say that wasn't a um, a fear of yours or an objection uh, or a uh, obstacle. Uh, what what would have you done? I mean, would not know without knowing your ninety three percent. Right. Rate, I okay? think we probably. I mean, I had I had this theory that it the ungated would work better just because I have a couple of friends in other industries that have tried it and have had better results. So I had a theory that it would be better, but I, you know, I mean, it's like anything else. You're taking a big risk. And do you want to take the risk on something like this that you, I mean, it's a big launch and we have huge, really big revenue goals. So do we want to take that risk or do we want to do it on something smaller? And we just decided that, yeah, let's take the risk and see if we can convert higher. And we, did. Congratulations. That's phenomenal. So let, let's put this in, a, in another term because most people won't have your clout to get into like a big trade publication, right? Or um, how, how can we – like if you're – well, it, it's all relative, right? So, I mean, if, you, if you're starting a, you know, local, a local vegan cooking blog, right, you know, reach out to local magazines, I guess, and right. offer them something that would be helpful for their yeah. editor. Basically, yeah. you need to look at what would be helpful for you. Like, how can I make your magazine better, you know, right. for your readers? I mean, that's And everybody needed. is looking for content. So if you can provide yes. really good, valuable content, they will take it. Yeah. And, and let's, let's, let's say that again, because I think a lot of people think that, like, blogger outreach – uh, reaching out to these people or reporters, help a reporter out, stuff like that. Um, they they think that you, you might be thinking that you're just coming at it as, can you help me? Can you help me? The reality of it is if you're bringing something to the table, it's definitely a relationship because yes. think about it from their end, right? How much easier did you just make their lives by right. you supplying this right. awesome research piece, right? Right. So they're probably thinking, yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, and you're getting free pub, and they're getting a what? I mean, what would have that cost to do? Who knows, right? I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, if they have to hire a freelance, thousands of dollars, right. thousands and thousands, right. and maybe up to ten that. What you provided them was probably in the double digits of thousands of dollars of value. So, um, yeah. So basically, you know, and you don't have to go that big. It's all relative again. So, um, okay, yeah, wonderful idea, Jeannie. Is there anything else um, before we we uh, continue on here as far as? Ways that you've built a community and engagement, and not engagement, but built the community. We've, we've given some grassroots ways. We've talked about leading with a lead magnet of a personal piece of content. We've we've talked about doing something a little bit bigger that you go out to associations or local magazines or regional or national or whatever, depending on what you're offering, um, to then give them something to link back to you, tag that page, use that to remarket to people. Is there anything else off the top of your head you can think of? Yeah, I, I think – I mean, we've touched on it, but I think it's really it really goes back to the relationship, and it's relationship across the board. It's, you know, if you want to get in the trade publications or the business publications, it's about relationships. If you want to build community, it's about relationships. If you want to build culture and morale among a team, it's about relationships. So, you know, all of these tools have changed and have made us more sophisticated and more savvy and able to scale more quickly, but that hasn't changed. You still have to build relationships. Mm hmm Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, more and more people are talking about this. 
Um, <laughs> and I think it's just because it's getting crowded and we're kind of circling the wagons to come back in so we can, again, build from the inside out. Right. Um, so what did you do? Think back before you had the Inquisition and, um, you know, you did – I mean, all those things you were doing took time to, to shape to take form. So what did you, was there anything you did to get initial engagement going? Because it's <laughs> tough, man. Right. I mean, was there like, were you yes. like super prodding and poking and asking questions? No, you, you know, I mean, like it, it really was this. And I remember Sarah Robinson just teasing me to death about it, but I created a spreadsheet. <laughs> I should find it. I created a spreadsheet and on there it was the person's name, the person's industry, where they worked, um, where they lived, and what I noticed about their hobbies. So in some cases I could get it from their online profiles and in some cases I had to find it, you know, by through research. So I mentioned that I would spend every Saturday finding 100 people to follow. And then I would add them to that spreadsheet and I would start, I would, you know, keep track of their hobbies and their interests and their kids and their pets and all that kind of stuff. And so when it came time to start having conversation with them, I had something to talk about with them because I knew who they were and not in a creepy way, but I mean, it was like ancillary research. It wasn't like, I knew, I know that you were at the movie last night. I was about to say, right? I was about to say, it wasn't right? at that level, but What'd I knew you think like, Gump? <laughs> right, right. I knew at the level, that, at, at least the information that they were, they, they had posted publicly in the last, sure. the week, the previous week. It was right? in profiles and not posts. Right, right. Yeah. The and now there's software to help you do that. But back then, it literally was my manual spreadsheet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then what do you do? You just mention stuff here and there. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. Okay. Awesome. Or I saw, you, I, wrote, I saw you wrote this article on this, or I saw you shared this po podcast on that. I mean, you still see some of that happening on Twitter today. It doesn't happen as much as it used to. Um, mm -hmm. You still see some of it. But, yeah, that's how I started. And, and did you mention in that email or message or however you communicated, and, hey, by the way, here's our thing? No. Okay. No. Nope. Never. Right. They, they, they just found their way back. Was it yeah, a, because people were, are curious. Said, that might have said blog, podcast, community. Or, or if I – it was mostly on Twitter, so, you know, if all they have so to do is click my profile. Click right there. Okay. Yeah. So it's there. So everyone knows right. your stuff's there. Well, and if you do shoot an email, I assume you would have it in your e Sure. Right. Yeah. So, so whatever you communicate with, don't say it, but you're saying it, right. you know, that way. Okay. Awesome. Um, now, uh, giveaways, games, I, I know you're big into having fun. Um, can you talk about some of your creative ideas, what you've done, you know, to, to, you know, keep, you know, once you've got a mature community and everything going here, do you do any, you know, any fun stuff like that? I don't we know, used going to do to more than we do now. Um, I remember... <laughs> We, I can't even remember what the contest was, but the, we had a contest to see um, the funniest Photoshop of my face. <laughs> I mean, ridiculous <laughs> stuff. But people. Oh, vampires. And oh, yeah. Like a bodybuilder's body. Um, you see the Anna Hanley post the other day? Yeah. Yeah. Funny. She and I laughed yeah. about that the yeah, other day. I was like, well, here's mine. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> um, somebody. Um, photoshopped out Tom Brady's wife and put my face in like I mean stuff like that like you know and it, I mean the amount of time that people spend on that is astonishing but it like they'll do it they'll do it for a pen <laughs> yeah or some popcorn or some popcorn right <laughs> very cool so you so you were doing that for a while but you kind of shied away from that I mean is that something that really, you know, it's better to do your inquisitions and some of your other stuff in the trainings. I mean, you guys. Yeah, we it. found better results from that kind of stuff. Okay. And, and I think, too, that, you know, when we were in the middle of the Great Recession and then we had the debt ceiling debate and there was like all this stuff going on in the country, um, people had more time. Right. And then the whole thing became do more with less. I love love that phrase. Oh, um, yeah. And so now everybody's like, oh, I don't have time for anything. So I think we've kind of switched that pendulum back to, okay. I don't have time to Photoshop your face into Giselle's yeah. body. Yeah. No, I hear you. So, I mean, but that, again, that that's advice, right? I mean, that's, you know, what, you know, you're telling all this stuff that, you know, would work well for you. And, um, and that's maybe something that, hey, it's probably better to, you know, do more rubbing shoulders, you know, highlighting other people, yep. 
of training, teaching, you know, meat and potatoes, but then you I mean you always can have fun all the way through all this stuff. So it's not, I'm not saying don't do games to not have fun, but have fun with what you're doing it, but it might not be the bestest thing to do. And, right. And that's okay. Cool. Now I, I've seen you sing the praises recently of implementing postmatic. Can you let us know, you know, how this works and why you love it so much? So I love postmatic for the purpose of it, with all of the other commenting platforms that you would put on your blog, you don't get the email addresses of the people who comment. And Postmatic leave, puts that right into your database, so you have all of that. The only reason we no longer use Postmatic and went back to Discuss, and it was a very, 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 very painful decision for me. But the only reason we didn't we did that is because uh, it wasn't connecting to the email software that we use, so we were having to manually import. And then anytime anybody unsubscribed, we'd have to manually do that. And it became, I mean, we, we would oh, miss God, some, and it became years. too laborious. Yeah, so that's, I mean, you'll notice that on SpinSlux we have discussed back, but that's the reason. If I, if, if once they figure out the, the integration they, yeah, with some of these, yeah. yeah, some of these other softwares, then we would, we would be back for sure. What did you like about it then? I loved everything about it. I loved the way it looked. I loved the customer service. I loved um, that I could have all of the email addresses in my database. I loved all of it. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll move on from there since, um, you're not using it anymore, but Postmatic, get your API. Well, I definitely recommend good. them. I definitely yeah. recommend them. Like if you're, if you want to use their, if you're not set on like an infusion software or Marketo or a HubSpot or an active campaign, but and you're willing to use their mail software, I it, there's nothing better. But if you've already built something with one of those, you know, the big guys, and we had, I mean, you know, because we have so many people and we've already built all our automations and everything, I wasn't going to switch just to have a commenting platform. Understood. Understood. Now let's talk. What are some uh, things that didn't work for you? We talked about games. You shot away from that. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention? Like, oh yeah, don't do this. <laughs> um. Hmm. Lots of stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, probably the biggest failure that we've had is we tried to launch a membership site in 2011. And because we had such an engaged community and because we, you know, people were sharing our stuff and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, and so we're like, okay, we see a need for a membership site where people can go in and, you know, get the information that they need and be led through an online course kind of thing. And it was back before, you know, you had off-the-shelf learning management systems and back before anybody was doing online courses or anything like that. And it failed miserably. And the reason it failed miserably was because we just assumed that we had such a rabid community that they would put their money where their mouth was, and they didn't. And they didn't because, not because they didn't support us, but because they didn't see the value. They didn't see the reason that we were doing this. And even though we knew that this was coming to the industry and to the world, nobody else had that foresight to say, oh, this is cool. We should do this now. And we didn't provide the value in those terms. Um, so we had to shutter it because it, I mean, it failed miserably. So you know, just because you have a community doesn't mean they're necessarily going to buy. Mm -hmm. And just because you sit in a meeting with really strong email marketers, internet marketers, and they all gasp at you because you have 30,000 people who you've never sold to, or you've sold to once and they didn't buy, um, that doesn't mean that they're going to buy either. And so even you can care and you can cultivate, but you also have to, Sophie Lizard said this to me, and I'll never forget this. She said, the people that get, that give you an email address want to buy something from you. And I was like, no. And she goes, yes, that's why they're giving, that's why they're trusting their email address with you. And she was right. So you have to, and it was a very hard lesson for me to learn. So in addition to caring and cultivating and building, you also have to provide that reason for them to stick around. And the reason for them to stick around is not because you're being nice to them. Uh -huh. The reason they stick around is because you're providing value to them on a professional level. So what did you do? So we surveyed our audience. Um, and I, I asked the question, if you could spend one hour with me, what would we talk about? And that was the only thing on the, the survey. 
Um, and I got everything from we would eat cupcakes and drink wine, which is great by me, to really insightful, thoughtful comments. And from that, we decided, okay, there seems to be a need for figuring out how to integrate um, all of these other tactics with traditional media relations. And so we launched an online course. We did it as a pilot. It was just webinar-based. It was no frills. Um, we did that, and, and we used – Like a one-off? Yeah. Okay. We used the, the wording that they used in the survey, so they felt like when they came to all of our stuff, it was speaking directly to them because mm -hmm. it, we used their words. Um, and then we launched a mastermind group, and then we, we've built from there. So we actually have this big launch coming up. So next week we do our free five-day boot camp that will lead into our online course that will lead into a mastermind that will lead into coaching. So, you know, it, it builds okay. all on top of each other. Gotcha. So let, let's back up and put all this together, what you said. Basically, make no assumptions, right? right? I mean, that's basically <laughs> the mistake you made. That's, that's a good and, one, yes. <laughs> and then you you learn that hardish way. I mean, not, not, I mean, it didn't. It was an expensive it lesson, just, yeah. One thing yeah. Just, but it yes. didn't work, right? And it sucked. But so then you ask. So don't make any assumptions. Ask your community, hey, wh what? In, in a in a cool, I mean, you did it in a very cool way. So think of a cool way to do it, but ask like, hey, what do you want to learn about, right? And, and you know what? And in round by the way, you're basically and your team is saying, what would you buy? But and so you're 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 learning from that, and then you teach them on that stuff, right? So I mean, that's that's basically how you you ask them, figured out what they wanted, and then you offered them something that they would pay for in regards to that. And then you also mentioned. You have you you lead with the free you know a valuable free offer, and then that then that gravitates or naturally goes down the path of what you've already figured out what these kinds of people normally want to learn about correct right right and then so that's how you lead them in yep. gotcha okay awesome all right well let's uh, uh just got a couple minutes left here what, let's talk about what kind of companies out there need to be like hey you know what um, you can still blog. You can still, you know, utilize content marketing. You can still build a community of sorts in the sense that you're putting the information in front of people and, um, you know, in a certain demographic and all that. But they might not, you know, building a community might not be for them. Um, do you have any advice for? I, I mean, again, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to even think how to ask this question because there's like tens of thousands of different types of companies, right? But um, you know, like a, a tax attorney or a law firm or, you know, I, I just – to me personally, I don't see them building a community, right? That those are Well, I think stuff. you're so thinking we'll... about it from the, the traditional sense in the way that I've built community. I think you definitely are still mm -hmm. building community. Like my mm -hmm. accountant is freaking amazing, and he's been really good to me for the last 10 years. And so anytime anybody asks me for a referral, I send them to him, and I know that he's going to take really good care of them. So you still have – I'm still a brand loyalist. I'm still somebody who's going to refer mm -hmm. business to them. And every business has that. Every single business has that. Um, mm -hmm. Every business. Even if you're selling toothpaste, you you have people who are going to say, I mean, I have been a Crest girl my entire life. And two weeks ago, I was in a, in a hotel and I would forgotten my toothpaste and they had Colgate. And I was like, ugh. So I used Colgate and I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've been missing out on this, and it's because the hotel had recommended a different brand of toothpaste, right? So I just bought Colgate for the first time in my entire life. Um, so I, if, you, if you think about it from the perspective of the people who, from a B2B perspective, are going to refer business to you, who are going to help you with word of mouth, who are your centers of influence, who are your influencers, if you think about it from that perspective and not in, you know, people who are commenting on your blog, I think you still are building community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as far as the traditional sense of, like, your community, you, I guess the best way we can try to say it is, you know, if, if, if you're, it has to be a very targeted audience. Who it's, it does. You know, it's something that is in their daily lives yep. that they they – obsess about you know yeah. they, like you're not gonna um, you're right you're not gonna build a community around tax accounting yeah because nobody's yeah. on unless you're that's what you do for a living nobody's on the internet going oh i really want to learn about tax accounting today every day mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, yeah. So just think about it that way. You know, if you have something that they think about it all, you know, every week basically, it's in their head. You know, that then then that could be, you know, a community worthy type of thing. You well, know? and that's a really I, good I, point. Know. I have a really good friend who who's a former attorney, and he's big on um, FCPA compliance. So you know what you have to do without getting arrested for um, bribery. And I mean, his niche is really small, but he does a weekly podcast and he has built a community of rabid fans who think he is the FCPA God because this is what he does. So even though the, the, his community is, you know, he's not going to build millions of people, his community is relatively small, he still has rabid fans. So there are things that you can do from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to discourage everybody with too much, but you got to set expectations. You sure, know? Yeah, of course. You know, in, in general, because you know, I don't want anyone going to the efforts of doing everything you're doing. Like, why is this tax guy <laughs> commenting on my stuff? Leave me alone, tax guy. All right. So, um, okay, cool. Well, um, oh, one, one small other, other question is, how often do you do an ask? I know you have your lead gen efforts with the offers, and that's an ongoing thing to get them into your pipeline. But do you do any one-offs to your community like you did way back when, or is it all about your, um, you know, the whole courses and getting everybody involved there? Do you do any more one-offs, and if you do, how often do you do them? Yes, we have what I call the PR Dream Team, which is our private Slack community. And in there, it's very – like we were just talking about it this morning. You know, people are really engaged. They're helping one another – We've noticed that some of them are working together. Um, so there are things that we're doing to continue to build that, but we kind of discovered that people want that private conversation so that their bosses or their clients don't see that they're spending time online during the day doing that. And this gives them that outlet where they can share information pretty freely without fear of, quote, unquote, being caught. Um, so we, I mean, so we're Gina, testing you're, you're, stuff. you're adding to the $46 billion of wasted time spent on social Correct. media. Correct. But I don't even think, I mean, yeah, for sure there is some wasted time, but I don't <laughs> no, think it's all, no, it's I would say I'm adding yeah. to a portion of that because some of it is definitely wasted time. But, you know, it's pretty fun to see, oh, I'm working with so-and-so who I met in the PR dream team. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. It is so cool. It's so cool. So you were saying, so you have them in there, but you don't. You're not asking them for anything in there, no. right? Or okay, but I but mean, we certainly will off, say like we did. have this forthcoming, or we're doing this, and you know, they get they get access to things that nobody else gets. I mean, there's stuff like that, but no, we don't say, mm-hmm. hey, go buy this or do this. Mm-hmm. So your main thing is your ongoing deal. Yep. Okay, cool, and, and that's probably the most safest, best business model that you could have. Is well, ongoing. it's also the. Uh, most profitable and most predictable and <laughs> all of it yep yeah. all that all that stuff that you need to do a proper yep. business plan yep. so awesome all right any parting thoughts before i have to let you go i think the return on relationship is really what you have to leave here with it's i mean uh-huh. this is not easy work and it's not going to happen overnight but if you build relationships with human beings it will work awesome Jeannie, how can people continue to le- uh, learn from you Spinsucks.com. Just go to spinsucks.com. You'll get Jeannie's Twitter. You'll get her link to start paying her some money and learning from her. Awesome. Well, Jeannie, it's always a good time. Appreciate it. And uh, until next time. Always good to talk to you, my friend. Come to Chicago. I will. I will. Have a good one. (laughs) See you.